Hi, computerized accounting class. My name is Chris Barr. I'm actually not your instructor here. Your instructor is Gabriella Kisner for this class. Uh, Gabriella was given this class about the last minute, so my colleague John Large and myself are doing uh, a three-part series here over Excel to help get started with this course. Um, so we're going to get started today with our first project. This is an ugly document. I mean, it's formatted. Look at look at everything here. You have highlighted different colors. You have different decimal places, all this. It's very hard to read, right? So uh, one of the purposes here whenever you get into QuickBooks is whenever they export things out of QuickBooks, uh, the format is pretty, let's just say ugly. It's pretty ugly, right? So what we're going to do is just see how ways we can clean this up to make it look more professional. Um, the first thing, they have these columns here that are blank. They don't have any data. They're really not needed. So the first thing we're going to do is actually delete these. We can just click on it and delete each one separately. I'm sorry, my mouse double clicks. I need to get a new one. All right, and we can delete each one individually. But the shortcut here is to hold down the control button. See, control will select... Uh, only the columns that you select. There's another button called shift. Shift will select everything in between, but we don't want everything in between. We want, only want the individual columns. And we'll go ahead and delete those. Alright, let's do the same thing for the rows. We have some extra rows in here. Alright, what else? Well, we don't want this highlighting necessarily. I don't know what it means, why they highlighted these or anything, but we're going to try to professionalize it. So I'm going to press Control A, which selects everything. And if you don't know that shortcut, you can just select everything yourself. But shortcuts are very handy when you get in a professional environment because they allow you to do your job quicker. There are often deadlines in the accounting field, so it just helps to know these shortcuts going to pay off. All right, so we want to take away the highlighting. So we go No Fill. All right, that's taken care of. Next thing for these, we want to standardize uh, the format of all these. Some of these have more and less decimal places, different colors. So what we're going to do, we want to go to the properties. I don't know where properties is because I only know the shortcut. The shortcut is press control one. It'll take you to the properties. All right, these are currency numbers, so we'll go ahead and go with currency. And they're such large dollar figures that we really don't need to keep track of the cents necessarily. All right, from here I'm going to show you a very handy tool. This is called Format Painter. Once we find a cell that we like, no matter which one it is, we'll just select it, and we'll go to Format Painter, and then we'll paint that format over all the other data. Look what's going to happen. Yes. Boom, all in one click. We got rid of all that uh, that messiness. It's nice and clean. One thing I like the data central or centered. So I clicked on this button that centers the text. Um, we need this one a little bit bigger. This, you see how this column's a little bit bigger than the others? I'm going to go and standardize all their sizes. All right. Now, let's go ahead and standardize, use the Format Painter again, standardize all these positions so they're all the same format. And we can do the same thing for the player's names. All right. For the title, this is the annual salary for the year ending. We're going to go ahead and merge and center this. So this button here merges together all those cells and centers it, so it looks like more like a title. All right, some of this isn't, there aren't like hard and fast rules about what is professional and not. Some of it's kind of artistic, and that's what we're going to do here is just add a different color, background color. Let's go ahead and go, if we're going with a darker color here, it makes sense that our text is a lighter color. So we can do something like that. Um, I don't like that these are different sizes. One's 22 and the other's 11, so let's go ahead and standardize the size. And maybe we want to bold those and underline them. Let's go and make this column bigger so we can see the whole picture. And this is more of a preference too, but I like that centralized. 
All right, we could add a border if we're going to print this. Let's go ahead and sh have that as the same format and the same 16 font. Let's go ahead and add a border. So here, borders, you can do multiple different things. You can do just an outside if we just wanted an outside border. Or we could do the all borders here. This makes it a little bit easier to read once we get onto a line. But I think that's about it for the cleaning up of this document now. If we printed this off, it looks nice and neat. We can see what each player made throughout the time period uh, for the certain year that's ended. We can see their position pretty clearly. It's nice and easy for the eyes to read. Again, some of it is artistic. There's always more things you could do or different things you could do. But this, to my mind, looks fairly professional right now. What we also want to do in this video is basically cover every button on this home screen. Notice there's a tab here with the home screen. So we got the cut, uh, the cut and copy commands here. The shortcut for uh, copy and paste is Control C to copy. That gets it onto your clipboard, and then you press Control and V at the same time to paste it. So there's uh, copy and paste. There's another one. If we want to undo that, we really don't want it over there. There's another one called cut and paste. If you press Control X, it cuts it. So then this time, whenever we paste it with Control V it's going to cut it out of there so it's just going to move it instead of copying it it moves it but again we don't want that change so we're going to reject it we've already covered format painter this is one of the most handy tools in there that's how we were able to quickly get this spreadsheet from a mess to a to a nice clean document you have things with fonts over here where uh, excel and word both have tons of different fonts uh, pretty standardized calibari is the uh, standardized one here but there's some other fonts uh, you have the text size, so you can change the text from being small to large. You have the bold, the italicize, and the underline features. So, italicize, underline. And we've already covered the borders here, <clears throat> but there's a lot of different types of borders here. Uh, if you're doing accounting work and you wanted to emphasize last number like an income statement, you might do like this one. And if you have last number on there, that's a typical way to represent it. Let's see, you got the background color, so you can change the background color. And again, the blue is just a preference. But if you have a lighter color, you want a darker text. And if you have a darker color, you want a lighter text. So, like, you don't want to go white text with that. That's hard to read, right? So, you just want to have a good contrast, whatever color you choose. Um, these are just text size. Text size can go up or down. This is actually handy though for a whole document that has different sizes because it keeps all of it consistent. So relative to how big the other text is. So it doesn't make it all the same size like this is going to make it all the same size. This is going to keep this part a little bit bigger. It's going to take everything down a step for example. So we can see it getting smaller or we can see it getting larger. Uh, these three buttons control the, the justification of the text. I'm sorry, I'm a professional. I've used this a lot, but I'm not an Excel instructor necessarily. Some of these have names that I just know what they do and not their formal name. This is the align the text to left. So if you want it on the left side, if you want it centered, or if you want it on the right. Um, here controls the position within the cell. In order to see it, we're going to have to make the box bigger so you can have it centered inside the cell or down at the bottom just depending on what you're working on. Uh, this I've never used this one in Excel. I think it changes the orientation of it a little bit. The indents if you just want to indent something over a little bit. So you have both ways decrease and increase indent. If you want to wrap the text, the wrap text would, like if this was too small, and you wrap the text, it'll move it down a row, but then it takes up another row. We covered merge and center, that's what we did here to make this basically just one cell, it merged together all these cells. Um, you have the different uh, formatting of cells. I handled this by pressing, highlighting the data and pressing Control 1 to go into the uh, cell properties. 
but here's another way to do it change it to currency or accounting if you're doing dates different date formats times percentages fractions scientific or text uh, hit more formatting if you want dollar signs like a, these are dollar signs but then we don't want the extra decimals so we could have a dollar sign up there to indicate they're all but I think it says it's annual salary so I don't think it's necessarily needed commas these already have commas oops it kept the dollar sign let's give it a dollar sign uh, these move the decimal um, we can show more decimals but if you're talking about 46 million dollars I don't think this guy cares about the 10 cents on this 46 million dollars so we'll go and hide the decimals for this problem here you have conditional formatting so you can format a cell um, based on different rules if it's greater than this or less than that or other type of formatting rules you have other places here we can change the um, the format you got a lot of different headings and stuff if you just want to go with the default one or you can choose like I did the color and the text by itself and you can note different things about the cell if you use a formula here yeah you can insert cells if you want I usually just right click if I wanted to insert a cell go like that another shortcut if you want to know is F4 repeats the last movement so you can keep adding rows delete cells format we'll get into functions more next time this one's one of the function sum average count numbers min max we'll get into that with the next series in this functions sort and find if we're looking if this is a long spreadsheet and we wanted to find a specific name or yeah we can go and cover filters right now all right if we filter this maybe we want to organize them based on their salaries the highest salary in the latest year this only goes up to 2014 so we can see the highest paid players right here and it orders it in that order or maybe we want it in alphabetical order for a certain reason and then we can put the names in alphabetical order so if we click on highlight the data and go to filter it's under data filter it allows us to organize the data based on something maybe we want to organize them based on their positions so we can see all the uh, catchers first first baseman second etc All right, but um, you check Blackboard. I bet your instructor is going to put up an assignment that's similar to this where you're just going to clean up a spreadsheet. Uh, she'll let you know any specific rules related to the due dates and everything else. And that's about all I have. So I'll see everyone for the second part next week. All right, bye-bye.